Things have been so quiet around here without Courtney. He was such an energetic sort. It's very difficult to believe that he is gone. Yes, I'm sure it is. Mrs. Allen, were you aware of the particulars of your husband's business? Oh, not really, Mr. Holmes. Courtney always felt it was his responsibility to shield me from the emotional ups and downs of his business affairs. Do you have any idea who might have wanted to see your husband dead? I am sure I do not. How could anyone have wanted him killed? He was such a good man. We're sorry to inconvenience you, Mr. Camp, but we need to ask you a few questions. <clears throat> Excuse me, beastly cold. Of course, I'd be happy to help. What would you like to know? Specifically, why you were removed from Project 10. Our Lord Raglan simply assigned me elsewhere. Since Project Number 10 was well along, he felt I might be more useful in other areas. Is that all he told you? Well, he also mentioned that my visits to the French Embassy had been misinterpreted in some quarters. What brings you to the Embassy so frequently? I am secretly engaged to Annette Zobar, daughter of the Vice Council. Lovely girl. Unfortunately, her father, Paul Zobar, is not awfully fond of me. Her uncle, Emile, however, is sympathetic to us. Since I work for an arms company and he is the military attaché, my visits there are ostensibly to see him. Have you ever discussed Project 10 with Monsieur Zobar? Oh, no, I would never. <coughs> you should cut back on your smoking until you are well. But I don't smoke. Then to whom do these belong? Oh, I bought those as a birthday gift to Emile Zobar. Burns and Hill are his favorite. Oh, yes. I recall that gentleman. He looked like a walrus. He could barely fit into the theater seat. Oh, my. At what time did the performance end that evening? Ten o'clock. Did you see Mr. Meshkoff exit at that time? Now that you mention it, no. I'm quite sure he was gone before the final curtain call. Of course, I recall March 9th. It is our wedding anniversary. That evening, we had a formal dinner party for 30 guests. What time did the festivities begin? Most of the guests arrived by half past six, but not all. Count von Schulenberg and his wife made their grand entrance at 8.30. Eight months ago, Alan came to this office with the design for the revolutionary new naval gun, most secret. The design was approved by the Navy. What about the meeting you had planned with Mr. Allen for the evening of March 9th? He never appeared, but you probably already know that. Quite. Actually, I knew nothing of what we were to discuss, but I've kept the wire he sent me that morning. Meet tonight, 8.30, your office. Call out the guard, pounce at 10. Quite vague, don't you think? Does it mean anything to you, Captain Egan? I think Alan was worried about security for project number 10. Of course, I put some of my best men on it right away. Did you come up with anything? Richard Camp, a development engineer on project number 10, was discovered bringing boxes and bundles to the French embassy. Emile Zobar, French military attaché, has his office there. So you think Mr. Allen had information implicating Camp in a security breach of project 10? I did. Still do. But Lord Ragland, head of the project, assured me that Alan's security fears were unfounded. You've spoken with Ragland since Alan's death? Yes, we met on March 11th. As a precaution, he assured me he would remove Camp from the project. Can you think of anyone else who might pose a security risk to the project? Yes. For now, I have my men investigating Zobar, Van Schulenberg, Delgera and Metkoff. Their governments would all have great interest in our new gun. And what have you uncovered so far? Unfortunately, nothing. Yet. I'm here about the Courtney Allen murder. Can you give us any information, Ellis? Oh, the Grand Arms Company case. Well, as you might already know, they were working on a secret new naval gun. Said it would be superior to anything available today. If superiority on the high seas isn't motive enough for murder, I don't know what is. Do you know who killed Alan? 
Personally, I doubt it was an Englishman who pulled the trigger. If I were you, I'd go knocking on the doors of the military attachés, Delguera, Count von Schulenberg, Zobar, and Meshkov. Are you suggesting espionage? Perhaps you and Holmes should draw your own conclusions. I've already drawn mine. Were you able to talk with Zobar? I talked with a Zobar, but not the one we were looking for. The chap I spoke with was Paul Zobar. He informed me that his brother, Emil, was at home right now. Did he know anything about Richard Camp? If he did, he was not forthcoming. In fact, he seemed most flustered at the very mention of Camp's name. I cannot deny it. My government is very interested in the new naval gun being developed by Grants. But we are a patient people. We will wait until the British government deigns to allow Grant Arms to sell us the new gun. Sir, would you mind telling us where you were on the evening of March 9th? Was that not the night of Mr. Allen's death? It was. Well, let me see. Ah, yes. I was attending a performance at the Covent Gardens Theatre. And now, gentlemen, if you will excuse me, I have some business to attend to. Any luck, Holmes? No. And it's a good thing I've learned never to rely on anything as elusive as that. It appears that if we wish to question Signor Delguera, we must do so at his home. Mr. Lindhardt, I understand Mr. Allen was scheduled to meet with Captain Egan at 8.30. Oh, yes. Egan's the artillery officer for the Admiralty. I saw him leave for the meeting around 8. He said good night and went out to the back door to the alley where he always leaves to catch a cab. Do you know what the meeting was about? Not that particular meeting. But Mr. Allen and Captain Egan did meet often to discuss the progress of their new special project, Project 10. I did find it curious that the meeting on the 9th was scheduled for the evening. All the others occurred during the day. I imagine a person in his position must have been extremely concerned about security. Indeed he was. He called in Lord Ragland after he noticed several strange people hanging around the Deverell Street plant. All the technical data, blueprints, that sort of thing are housed there. I see. I understand you are now secretary to the new president, Mr. Marlowe. Yes. He was Mr. Allen's hand-picked successor, which perfectly illustrates the type of man Mr. Allen was. What do you mean? Only that there was no love loss between them, and yet recognizing Marlowe's outstanding business skills, he named him as his heir, so to speak. Sorry, Lord Raglan isn't available at the moment. Perhaps I can help you. I'm his assistant, Walter Kehoe. Mr. Keogh, can you tell me anything about Mr. Allen's visit here on the morning of March 9th? He came to see Lord Raglan, but he weren't here. Do you know the purpose of his visit? No, I wouldn't be knowing their business, but it was most likely about Special Project Number 10. He'd be in secret and all. And when did Lord Raglan finally arrive? He never did. So then did Mr. Allen leave? Not straight away. He said he had some details to attend to. I went back to the plant, and about a quarter of an hour later, Mr. Allen calls me and hands me a note. Says it came for Lord Raglan while I was down on the line. He wanted to make sure I got it to him. He also said I shouldn't mention his visit. I'd appreciate it if you'd take me to someone who could shed some light on Special Project 10. Well, that would be Richard Camp. But he left early today. He wasn't feeling well. I believe Scotland Yard's got the motive all wrong. How so? A common thief would not leave behind a briefcase. Therefore, the motive for the murder must be obscure. It seems that you have quite a puzzle on your hands. The possibility of foreign involvement struck me as soon as I heard of his death. But so far, all I know is what the Yard has released, which as usual amounts to sweet nothing. I'm surprised you're wasting your time on this one, Holmes. It was a simple robbery. We found Allen dead in an alley behind Grant Arms. Wallet empty, gold watch missing, briefcase open, contents askew but not stolen. It's an open and shut case. 
Was there anything else found at the scene that could be of use to us, Inspector? I doubt it. Nothing but a couple of tin cans and an old cigarette butt. Hmm. B and H. What does that mean? You don't know? Why, then, I must assume you also do not know why the end is evenly pinched all round. Perhaps you should read my monograph on the subject of 100 most commonly found cigarette butts. My word! The London Library closed for renovations? My stars! Carry on, Watson. Mr. Marlowe, I'm investigating the murder of Courtney Allen. May I ask you some questions? Uh, certainly. But at the moment, I'm much more concerned about the missing plans for our secret weapons project. And what project might that be? A special project number 10. Whatever do you suppose happened to them? I really have no idea, but that's a question for Scotland Yard to answer. Mr. Marlowe, do you recall where you were on the evening of the night? Oh, why, yes. I was having dinner with Sir Clayton Partridge. We had played a round of golf earlier in the day. I see. At Mr. Allen's death, I understand you automatically became the new president of Grant Arms Company, is that correct? Yes. Allen and I had an understanding on that score. Upon his retirement, I would take the office. As a matter of fact, that condition was the key reason I joined the company three years ago. Yes, I recall the Allen case. Chap was shot in the chest, at very close range too, if I'm not mistaken. How close? Oh, I'd say from a distance of two feet, no more. How could you tell? There were extensive powder burns on his overcoat. Do you have the bullet? No, but I'm sure it was of large caliber. How can you be so sure? I distinctly recall the exit wound. It was massive. Oh, how grisly. Were you able to speak with Alexei Meshkov? No, he wasn't home. At least I think that's what the seven-foot giant in the Cossack uniform was trying to tell me. Uh, by the way, Holmes, any idea what Dosvidonia means? Try the Russian embassy. What came out of your usual tete-a-tete -tete with Murray, Dr. Whitson? Oh, very funny, Helms. Actually, I learned nothing at all. Apparently, Murray is on holiday in the south of France with his brother Mortimer. I am afraid that none of the principals in your case have ever had any brush with the law. I guess you could say that's fortunate for them, but unfortunate for you. What a magnificent gun! Thank you, it's one of my favorite for quail hunting. It wouldn't by chance be a Grant Arms Company model? Oh, why, yes it is. They make the best guns, you know. And fortunately for me, my old friend Philip Marlowe is Grant's new president. So I get a bit of a break on the price. That's a spot of good luck. Tell me, Sir Partridge, when was it you last saw Mr. Marlowe? Played golf with him the very day of Courtney Allen's murder. When did you finish your last round? Oh, late afternoon, and then we had supper together. It must have been midnight when we parted company. Yes, I do believe I can help you out on that one. Uh, Courtney Allen was paying court to old von Schulenberg's new bride. What? The Countess von Schulenberg? <laughs> Deliciously wicked, isn't it? <laughs> Lord Ragland, on the night of Mr. Allen's murder, he had an appointment with Captain Egan. Yes, Egan's our purchasing officer for naval artillery. We've been working on a secret project for the Navy, and Courtney was concerned about one of the engineers being a security risk. Which one? It was Richard Camp. When Courtney and I discussed it, I gave no credence to the idea. Well, tell me, Lord Ragland, what sort of fellow is Richard Camp? He's splendid, really. Not a mark on his record. But as a concession to both Courtney and Egan, I removed him from the project and placed him elsewhere. Interesting aroma. What brand is it? It's Burns and Hills Imperials. It's their newest. Uh, would you care for one? No, thank you. Mm. Lord Ragland, after Mr. Allen's death, were you disappointed at not being named president? Not a bit. I'm quite happy in my work in the technical areas. Administrative matters hold no interest to me. Besides, one of Marlowe's conditions when he first came on was that he be Courtney's successor when Courtney retired. 
This is all such a tragedy, don't you agree? But if you'll excuse me, I have a few business matters to attend to. You know how it is. Quite. <clears throat> it's a bad business, this Allen murder. Have you heard any rumblings? Nary a word, Governor. I know a couple of blokes who ain't above using a pig sticker in a dark alley, but a pistol they ain't hardly sportin'. Hey, serve you up around. It appears that Mr. Allen left his entire estate to his wife, Beatrice. Indeed, just as his brother suspected. March the 9th was some days ago. I'm not sure I can recall. Does this help refresh your memory, sir? Uh, yes. Now I remember. Two gentlemen with the initials A.M. reserved private rooms for the evening of March the 9th. Their names? Alexander Mishkin and Anthony Mariano. Could you describe them? Mishkin was a giant of a fellow. Walked with a cane, spoke with an accent. He arrived about 8.30 and ordered supper. Was he joined by anyone? Not that you mention it, he was. By an English gentleman about in his mid-thirties. Do you recall anything about either of them? Only that they carried identical briefcases. What about Anthony Mariano? His reservation was for nine o'clock. He was about the same age as the Englishman, but no briefcase. Did he dine alone? For most of the meal. But a short fat man joined him for dessert. That's a Burns and Hill Imperial. You're not considering it, are you? Why do you ask? It's just that this is a very expensive blend of Turkish and Virginia tobaccos. Very strong, yet very smooth. It's not a cigarette for the casual smoker, but rather for the connoisseur. And begging your pardon, sir, you just don't strike me as a connoisseur. Oh, I see. Now, these Imperials are made to order, are they not? Oh, yes, sir. And we are the only shop in London that carries them. It's a relatively new brand, and the client list is very small and exclusive. Might I inquire who is on that list? Whatever for. I would like to know if it is worthy of my name. If you insist. Richard Camp, Sir Clayton Partridge, Lord Henry Ragland, Count von Schulenberg, and Emile Zobar. Hmm. I do hope it's nothing serious. Would you happen to know the meaning of the initials B and H? B and H? Why, that'd be Burns and Hill now, wouldn't it? What can I do for you, sir? I was wondering if you could identify this for me. I believe it's a cigarette butt, mate. I'm aware of that, sir. Rather, I wanted to inquire as to the brand. Oh. Well, that'd be the Burns and Hill New Imperial cigarette. Would you happen to know anyone who smokes them? Matter of fact, I do. Zobar, uh, Emile Zobar, French chap, uh, wicked gamesman. Every Friday night at 8.30 sharp, he's been drubbing my poor son Alfie in chess. Well, Holmes, the place appears to be closed for the afternoon. The sign on the front door says so. How very observant, Watson. You're learning the tricks of the trade. Would you care for one, Mr. Holmes? Burns and Hill Imperials. Quite good. No, thank you. I am loyal to my pipe. I doubt that I can shed any light on the murder of Mr. Allen. Were you aware that the Grant Arms Company was developing a new weapon for the British government? A new such a weapon, yes, but not of any of the details concerning it. I'm curious, Count. Do you recall where you were on the evening of March 9th? I recall quite clearly. My wife and I were at the home of Hector Del Guerra, military attaché to the Spanish government. Would you care for a cigarette? They're Burns and Hills Imperials. A wonderful smoke. Thank you, no. <laughs> you really shouldn't be smoking in your condition. It is nothing, just a little bit of a cold. <laughs> Tell me, Monsieur Zobar, where were you on the evening of March 9th? 
Ah, oh, yes. That was the night of Monsieur Allen's death. I was at Simpsons beating the pants off of Alfie, the so-called chess champion. <laughs> Are you acquainted with a Mr. Richard Camp? Oh, but of course. He's employed at Grant Arms Company, and he's secretly engaged to my beautiful niece, Annette. Why must the lovebirds be so secretive? Uh, because uh, my brother, uh, Annette's father, has an inexplicable dislike for the English. And you, Monsieur Zobar, do you share your brother's feelings? Oh, mon Dieu, no. I admire you English very much. Has Mr. Camp ever spoken with you about the special project on which he was working for Grant? Oh, never. Nor would I ever ask him about such a confidential matter. He has a profound sense of loyalty. That's why I admire him so much.